Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Ruby Tea and Veg Lamps Limited conference call hosted by Kirin Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kaushal Shinde from Kirin Advisors. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, I welcome you all to Urvi T West Labs and we are limited Q2 FY24 phone call. From the management side, we have Mr. Neeraj Gada and Mr. Siddharth Gada. Now, I would hand over a call to Mr. Neeraj Gada. Over to you, sir. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I extend a heartfelt welcome to each one of you joining us for the conference call at Urvi GM Red Lamps Limited, where we aim to devolve into our exceptional performance during quarter two financial year 24. Before we delve into specific quarter two and half yearly financial year 24, allow me to provide a concise review of our company. and its business model this will help you all to understand our company better budvi tnv lamp limited is a forefront of automotive lamp manufacturing and supply sector showcasing unparalleled expertise in crafting incandescent and wax based lamps operating under the esteemed brand name uval we are dedicated to provide tailored solution for both original equipment manufacturer that we call as oem and the aftermarket our diverse range of automotive lighting products including stop lights brake lights tail lights indicator lamps and wax based lamps which are used for instrument clusters like speedometers and exemplifies our commitment to the excellence with our extensive distribution network spanning india we actively pursue global expansion opportunities through strategic partnerships with leading led filament lamp manufacturers in china and philippines these collaborations underscore our dedication to deliver cutting edge solutions to our customers and even for future customers to be a significant achievement for us is being recognized as the largest manufacturer of automotive lamps for instrument clusters in india specifically for instrument clusters Moreover, we proudly hold the second largest position in automotive signaling and parking lamp segments for OEM, reflecting our commitment to meeting the diverse need of our current automotive two-wheeler industries and four-wheeler industries. In financial year 2023, company reported total revenue of 3,462.06 lakhs, with an EBITDA of 552.44 and a profit after tax of 86.76. against the backdrop of thriving indian auto component industry set to become the world third largest by 2025 our outlook is very optimistic with component sales to the domestic oem surging by 46% to reach about 27 billion dollars we anticipate the industry's revenue to hit remarkable usd 200 billion by 2026 Providing Urvi TNV Labs Limited with abundant opportunities for growth, navigating this dynamic landscape, our strategic positioning emphasis on innovation and comprehensive product portfolio ensures that we are well prepared to capitalize on high development prospects in all vehicle industry segments. This commitment positions us to thrive. into the evolving automotive landscape ensuring sustained growth and success for our company now i will comment on our financial highlights for quarter 2 and half yearly financial year 2023-24 it is evident that urvi tnv lamps limited has showed a remarkable resilience and strategic prowess In quarter 2 financial year 24 the company's total revenue witnessed a substantial upswing 
reaching 1081.55 lakhs, demonstrating its adaptability in ever-changing business environment, despite a slight dip in EBITDA of rupees 193.18 lakhs, the robust EBITDA margin at 17.86% reflects the company's operational efficiency. The noteworthy surge in net profit after tax to rupees 57.53 lakhs with PET margin of 5.32%. Further emphasizes Udvi's financial strength and sound decision making. The positive trajectory ends to a EPS of climbing to rupees 0.32 in quarter to a financial year 23. Two rupees 0.52 in quarter year to a financial year 24. Looking ahead to second half of financial year 24, Purvi's optimistic outlook is grounded in its strong quarter to performance and strategic initiative geared towards industry performance. The company's consistent growth and financial stability position is favorably for continued success and in the dynamic market lens. Turning into our attention to half yearly financial year 2024, Urvi's impressive total revenue of 1,976.05 lakhs, up from last year's 1,832.40 lakhs in half year financial year 23, underscores a sustained growth. The increased EBITDA of 356.39 lakh rupees coupled with improved EBITDA margin of 18.064% reflects sound financial management. The profit after tax for half year financial year 24 is at rupees 119.49 lakhs. With PET margin of 6.05% signifies robust possibility and profitability. The upward trajectory of earning per share from which is 0.82 in half year financial year 23 to 1 rupees 09 in half year financial year 24 solidifies Udvi's financial success. In summary, Udvi's commendable financial performance in half year financial year 24, coupled with its strategic initiatives, highlights its dedication to excellence as trusted supplier to tier one partners of major. OEM, mainly two-wheeler OEMs all across India. Purvi continues to be preferred supplier, emphasizing in its commitment to delivering top quality products in the market. Before we dwell into the question and answer session, I want to express my sincere gratitude to all of our stakeholders for being an integral part of our growth journey. Your support and involvement have played a crucial role in our success, and we genuinely appreciate your valuable contribution. With this, I would like to open the floor for question and answer. Thank you once again for your presence and continued support. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Jaiswal from Sri Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, our first question is, can you brief us about our product portfolio? Any uh, plan to expand, diversify the same? Uh, product portfolio, as I uh, gave my brief, uh, we are into mainly two-wheeler segment. We cater to all major two-wheeler segment of Indian automotive industry, where we are major supplier for speedometer lamps. Then we do supply indicator lamps, that is signaling lamps, for left and right, and brake lamps. So as of now, our Indian automotive industry is manufacturing somewhere around 1.5 million to 1.9 million two-wheelers per month. And uh, average speedometer lamps are required per vehicle is around five to six lamps. 
So this is the market potential. And we are one of the largest manufacturers of uh, speedometer lamps in India. So this is our product for incandescent lamps. We do uh, cater to OEMs for speedometer LED lightings, which we are under approval and under the process of approval for major OEMs. That would be the LEDs for futures. And we are also developing with some joint collaboration uh, future LED requirements of two wheelers and basically some e, -E bikes also. Okay. And sir, uh, who are our key clients and how much do we contribute to our revenue? Uh, we have, like as I said, our major clients are all uh, two wheeler industries. Like our major clients are Bajaj Auto Limited, Hero Moto Corp, TVS. Then we do cater to Yamaha for speedometer lamps. And there are many other small players also uh, who are supplying to OEM. Uh, many other OEMs like Tata Motors also they are doing. They are doing to Mahindra's also. So all these uh, are our prime customers to whom we supply our lamps through tier vendors like Lumex, uh, then we have uh, Minda Industries, Uno Minda, then we have Fia, Verox Lighting. These are our direct customers. Okay. And are there any long-term contract or agreement uh, with the key clients? Yes. So the system works like that. The, all the OEMs which I mentioned, like Bajaj Auto, Evo, Yamaha, TBS, so we have to approach OEM with our lamps and they will be testing our lamps. They will be finalizing all the commercials with our lamps. And then they will decide on which lake vehicle would be lamp will be prepared. Once they allocate, then they will ask their tier one vendors, which are their direct vendors, with a fixed SOB. Like they will, depending upon our quality, price and performances, they will ask the tier one vendor to buy this much SOB from OB. So these are the long-term things because OEM lamp approving process is long. That is somewhere around one and a half, two years process where you have to approve a lamp because, you know, some lamps have a life cycle of 1,000 hours. I'm sure if you have a, a two-wheeler, you will never remember changing your speedometer lamps. So that is the life cycle of the lamp. So all these lamps has to go so all this approval process, this is about 1,000 hours, 1,500 hours in some cases. So this two years of uh, testing procedure, once that is complete, then all the OEMs will ask the tier one vendor to undergo a uh, purchasing system and they will define our SOBs and commercial. Okay. And sir, what is the current capacity and its utilization? Sorry, can you just repeat your question, please? Thank you. Our current capacity and its utilization? So currently we have a, a plant based in Mumbai and uh, there's a place called Kathua in Jammu and Kashmir, which where we have two plants and one plant is in Mumbai. So currently we are utilizing Mumbai is around 70% in certain products. In certain products we are using 75%. And in Kathua also, it's somewhere around 70-75% of our capacity utilization there in specific products. In specific products, we have a capacity utilization of about 45-50%. Okay. And uh, ma'am, uh, sir, what is our, uh, any plan for expansion, uh, any capex in uh, coming year? Yes. Uh, we intend to grow and have some technical collaboration in terms of LED where we are uh, uh, almost uh, closing the uh, discussion with our technical partners who are in China and they are one of the major LED manufacturers uh, for automotive as well as housing. And we do have some tie-up with uh, Philippines companies for housing lighting, that is home lighting LED. So we are trying to come out with a product for LEDs in a shorter futures, uh, mainly for indicator lamps for two wheelers. That would be our target. And as I told in my trip, uh, LED speedometer is already under 
development and under testing with some of the OEMs. So once the test approval will come, then we will start supplying of the LEDs. Secondly, we do intend to venture into EV because EV is going to be the future thing. So we do have a plans and we have already tied up with some of the companies for prototype development of EV chargers, which I think we will also be launching soon in the near future once we are satisfied with the approvals and the testing at our end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Jiswa. Thank you. Participants who would like to join the question queue may please press star and one at this time. You may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Chinmay Irani from Kojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Mr. Rane, your line is unmuted. You may please ask your question. As the current questioner has dropped the queue, we'll take the next question from the line of Anupama Bhutra from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so my question is regarding, uh, you know, uh, the supply to directly to OEM and small players. So what is the differential margin when you supply to OEMs directly and when you supply to small players who in turn uh, supply to OEM? So this is my question one. Okay, so first I will answer uh, your question, Anupama. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, joining. So your question, if I am understanding correct, is what is the uh, commercial, what we supply to OEM and the smaller players, something like that? Right, right, right. So margins, is there any difference in the margins when you supply directly to OEM? So there was, uh, you supply to small players and in turn they supply to OEM. So as I told earlier, all the testing technical are approved by OEMs and the commercial is also finalized by OEM. So whenever we approach a new OEM, then they will first check our lamps, all kind of lamps. Application, they will then put their lamps to the bikes and uh, vehicles as well, four-wheeler, and that they have a cycle of testing for a certain period of time. Once that is done, then we are discussing commercials with them. So in commercials, they will finalize our share of business, and that is the final price we have to build to all these uh, uh, Tier 1 vendors which are our direct customers. So commercially, Tier 1 doesn't, uh, they don't play any role. Of course, if Tier 1 requires any specific uh, lamps, which are not for OEMs, but they're uh, different products like Lumex is exporting somewhere, or Fiam is doing export somewhere, or Fiam is doing their aftermarket sales, where they are supplying uh, retail kits to us. There, they will raise a different PO to us, which is non-OEM, and there the pricing are different, where we have a different set of price for them. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you can quantify a little bit on uh, OEMs and non-OEM margin, is that possible? Uh, like, OEM products are the lamps which we produce and which we supply directly to Tier 1 and which are in line going to be fitted in OEM. It's, it's something like which work uh, on day-to-day -day basis, like on JIT. The direct customer which we do retail, these are the different segment of the product where the margins are entirely different. Because retail, uh, where there are specific lamps which, which has, like we are already started LED headlamps which we supplied to our retail, like we have a networking in Delhi, Punjab, Haryana, Telangana, Bangalore, Kerala, Pune, Maharashtra, and all other states, where these these products have a different set of margins. The margins are uh, compared to higher than what we have a regular business from OEM. OEM as of a result is somewhere around 6 to 6 to 7% at our current uh, 
uh, operating levels, we are having margin of fat. Okay. Uh, so my second question is about replacement market. So uh, what kind of lifespan your product has and what kind of, if you can elaborate on your replacement uh, business, replacement market business? Yes. So replacement market in India is uh, a different uh, products altogether. Like you can see uh, automotives with very bright headlights which will affect while you are driving or crossing, you can see. So these are non-regulated uh, lamps, which are not, uh, OEM will not be using this, but the market demand sometimes has a specific kind of lamp. So these all lamps have a different production base, production facilities. Like in headlamps, we do LED headlamps, we do halogens as well. Halogens we are manufacturing here, LEDs also we are assembling here. Uh, then there are a retrofit kind of LED signaling lamps, which are also available in market, where you have to just remove your original company fitted lamps and you can just replace it with uh, the same type of fitting and that is an LED retrofit lamp. So these are the things which are uh, uh, available in OEMs and non-OEMs, that is the replacement market. So Udvi is catering to all these needs. We do have a range of uh, halogen headlamps. We do have a range of LED headlamps. We have a range of retrofit signaling. We have a range of speedometer LEDs, and there are LEDs uh, in two wheelers next to your headlamp, which are we call as a parking light. And then there are some lamps which are used uh, above your number plate. Those are also uh, bought by them. They have a small demand, but that is a big demand. Then in rainy season, there are specific demands uh, with uh, what we call as the fishing and all, and where they do the maintenance of their, their uh, boats and things. Then in North India, uh, during winter, now we will have a specific gold uh, lamp in halogen, which will be in demand for two, three months for this fog and all. So OEM is very segmented and very different kind of market and very organized, but replacement market is entirely different where each uh, state has its own kind of demand and own kind of preferences, depending upon the geographical and economical positions. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for that uh, answer. And so lastly, one more question. If you can just uh, give us like outlook, what is the goal of the company going forward maybe over uh, three to four years, and some kind of guidance um, in terms of uh, revenue or margins. Are the current margins sustainable, or you think that uh, the margins uh, will expand going forward? So any kind of guidance or any kind of outlook where the company is yes, uh, focusing and yes. what are its targets over uh, three to uh, four years, over three to four years? Yes, sure. I'm the thing is now, as... Uh, uh, there are, as I told you, there are about 1.5 to 1.9 million vehicles per month, uh, which is our main market for two diesel lamps. And out of which the uh, Hero is producing, Hero Motor is producing somewhere around 500,000, Bajaj somewhere around 400,000, TBS 300,000, Honda somewhere around 500,000. And the other small players, and EV, EV is somewhere around 100,000 a month, and uh, other small players, mind that we live there, the idea there, those are around 200, 300,000. So Udvi at present is catering to all this except Honda. So our first target is, like what we did is in this quarter two, we could, uh, one OEM, I will not be able to tell specific name, but one OEM we could uh, convince them with our performance and uh, uh, supply uh, commitment, and they have increased our SOB from 20% to 80%, and which is implemented from September 2023. So Udvi is looking forward to uh, good growth in sales by, um, in the next week, next quarter and uh, the quarter next week. So we are expecting a good sales growth because of this one OEM. 
uh, which has given us a good support and have a commitment also. So that is going to be the main part for this financial year. We have already entered discussion with Kona where we have uh, a limited presence for allowing us to test and supply. So if Honda will come, then we are expecting around 20-25% SOB from Honda also, which is a sizable SOB. So that we are targeting for the year uh, after April 2024 onwards. So where in that financial year, we are targeting to uh, enter Honda motorcycles and get business from them. And eventually, within a couple of years, we are targeting Honda's SOB to be around 50% with us and maintaining uh, all those all these customers who are already uh, have trust in us and who are already buying from us. Secondly, as I told, EV thing is going to be a future looking at the... Uh, so every winter we talk about pollution and then we forget. But now it is going to be... Uh, government starts to reduce emission and they are going to promote EV, but we are looking every day. So, Udvi has already started developing EV charges for two wheelers, and we are in discussion with some OEMs who are willing to try. And I think the next financial year, we are going to pick some business in these segment also. And as I told, LED also. So, so what I am quite optimistic about these three, four years which are going to come, which would be, uh, see a lot of change from, and uh, the company is going to diversify from incandescent, which is of course going to be a strong segment of revenue, and we are going to add revenues from LEDs and EV segment, along with some additional customer base, like Honda and also incandescent. Lamps. So, I'm quite optimistic on that, and we have already started our journey for that. I hope uh, I have answered your question. Yes, yes. Sir. And if I may, uh, can I ask one more question or I'll join back with you? No, no, it's okay, please. Yeah, so uh, just to, uh, I mean, you know, understand what is the company's moat or USP to combat uh, competition, you know, because this uh, space is very competitive. So for Urvi, what is that USP or what are the moats? Um, where you think that uh, you can combat, uh, you know, you can fight the competition and uh, uh, the OEMs are going to be like for a longer term, they will stay with you. So we started our industry in 2008. And as I told you, it takes around two and a half, three years initially for us to develop and approve our first lamp. So our first lamp was approved in 2012. And since 2012 to 2023, we have been growing with the same OEMs because there are about five to six major OEMs in India, as well as there are about three players, major players for uh, supplying lamps like halogen and incandescent to all OEMs. So, though the market is quite competitive, but uh, we have a strategic location where we are very near to OEM because OEM will prefer always uh, the units which are near to them and they are producing locally, where they have a control in inventory and quality. So we do have that strategic advantage while uh, we do have a base here uh, in Mumbai where we are catering to Pune, which is a major automotive hub. Then we have a plant in Kathua, which is in JNK, but quite near to Patan Court and uh, Highway. So we do cater there to the northern segment, which is uh, Delhi, Gurgaon, and Pantanagar, which is, a, which is a, again major hub to India, uh, major automotive hub. And in Hosur, we have a strategic logistic tie-up where we are having a, our uh, stock building and logistic is taking care. So. Hosur is also being a major automotive hub where we all have. So, in all, all these facilities will help OEM to uh, provide them support as and when required with the quality. Of course, uh, OEM, as you understand, automotive OEM, what we are having, Bajaj Chetak, to now what we have, Pulsar, you can see how much quality is demanded and how much upgradation of quality has been done. 
So OEM will always give preference to Burvi where we have the major quality supplier to all the OEMs. And secondly, we do have a very comfortable relation with OEM and we do cater and support them as and when required. So this last 10 years record, if you can see, OEM has always trusted us and give us, uh, given us a more and more SOB. Like I said, last month also, in September, we could get a major boost in our SOBs from one major OEM. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viper of Shah from Cozin Finvest. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, first of all, the congratulations on good set of number. And, uh, sir, I have two questions, two, three questions related to your expansion in the EV. So, exactly what we are planning to do in the EV charging segment? Are we uh, setting up a charger, manufacturing chargers, or are we planning to do some charging network with we'll tie up with some OEM? So, exactly what we are doing it. Mm -hmm. And what would be your second question? Uh, second question is related to the cost related to this expansion. Have we done any capex in this? And uh, if we, if not, what will be the quantum of capex that we are looking for? And uh, by when it will be available in the market for the consumption? Or whatever is your plan of charges or anything? So, uh, these are the three questions. So, Vaibhav I will first answer your first question. So, specifically, you have asked for EVs. So, yes, we are already developing a prototype of EV chargers, which is onboard and offboard chargers, both types. So, onboard charger is charger which comes with the vehicle, offboard charger which is mounted, uh, and when you leave your vehicle, it is going to be charged on it. This is the fast charger. Offboard okay. charger is the fast charger, uh, and uh, onboard charger is the charger which comes to the vehicle. So we are developing these chargers with okay. a strategic tie-up, which we will be able to announce in a due course of time once we are satisfied with the, and we have completed the discussion. But we have already started uh, developing this prototype, and we are expecting the prototype to come in a couple of months. Oh, oh, and then again, of course, it would be then given to OEMs. Uh, with OEMs are helping us to develop as well because of their interest. Would be being a small and medium sized company which has got a significant cost advantage compared to other big players in this segment. So OEMs are also helping us to develop this, and we are expecting the first prototype to come in a couple of months where it would be again given to OEM for testing and they, it would be tested uh, uh, on and off the vehicle again. So it is going to take about five, six months more. And then we will be, of course, during that time we will be ready with production base in India and we will be producing for this. Of course, for the CapEx, we have already discussed uh, the CapEx with uh, some of the institutions which are willing to invest in this segment and uh, as I told you we have already developed the prototype so we are almost uh, done with the major capex part but there would be a capex on, in terms of testing facilities there would be some capex as we get more business uh, the, the capex the second part of the capex will come in enhancement of production like we have a uh, we are targeting somewhere around 5 to 10 percent of the market size for this financial year, the coming financial year. And after that, we are going to target about 25 to 30 percent more. So for that, again, for next year, we will be doing some capex, which would be for uh, enhancing production capacities and maybe a little bit auto optimization of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, sir, uh, currently OEM are manufacturing these chargers on their own. So, do they have their, they, they are having any tie-up? Uh, how is the scenario with the current OEM? So, I think by Honda, Hero, not Hero and TVS are the major OEMs which are 
actively into EVs, which uh, already they are clients. So how how is the current scenario uh, for their uh, charger uh, manufacturing? EV segment, these are the major OEMs, and there are many small players as well. The, who are who were not regulated before, but now they are regulated because there are some uh, bikes and two wheelers which are below speed limit. They also need charger, and there are certain OEMs like you said, there's Honda, there's Hacker, Ola, TBS, Bajaj. They also are manufacturing. They are also manufacturing. So, okay. as I said, all these OEMs will be testing the chargers and then they will be supplying it along with their vehicle. Uh -huh. so one is the onboard which will be fitted and offboard will be supplied along with uh, uh, the vehicle. Uh -huh. That is how when you buy an EV, the charger will come together. Uh -huh. One will be in your garage and one will be uh, mounted in your vehicle. So you can just stand. So OEM will procure from the third party and they will do their own testing and approval. Like they do for lamps like they do for silencers, like they, they do and they assemble and they they mm. approve. Got it, got it, got it. So, so uh, uh, on speaking about this topic only, so you have mentioned that you are having some tie-up, a strategic tie-up. So I won't, don't want to understand the, I don't know the name, but is this Indian player or a foreign player with whom we have a tie-up? So there are mixed because for certain products, uh, we have tie-ups with foreign uh, where the major technologies involved. Certain uh, players are uh, like the body part and all that we have developed in India. So there's a mix. It's not uh, a specific person is going to make specific. We have been uh, connected with uh, major other players who are developing uh, this part. And then we are assembling the prototype again at the third party, which is in India. Okay, okay, okay. And my last question, because I'm in flight, uh, it is about to take off. Uh, so what, what what's the growth you see in this uh, segment for next, uh, let's say, two to three years or down the line? So currently, uh, you are talking about only EV or the all type of EV? Only, only EV. Only EV. So EV is very interesting. Sorry? The EV charging segment that you are planning, uh, that, uh, yes, yes. Uh, that growth only I want to know. So EV segment for four wheelers and two wheelers are going to be, uh, as everybody knows, EVs is future. So currently what I understand that roughly somewhere around 50,000 to 80,000 organized sectors is manufacturing and 20,000 vehicles are being manufactured by small players. That is easy. This segment is going to grow somewhere around 500,000 in a couple of years per month. I am talking about all these figures per month. So the demand for this would be somewhere around you can anticipate Every year it's going to grow by somewhere around 35 to 40 percent conservative or 70 percent uh, optimistic. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you so much. That's Thank, you much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Participants who wish to join the question queue may please press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Chinmay Rani from Kojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations for the great, great set of numbers. So, so I have two questions that you were discussing about the EV. So this EV plant would be, uh, would you be having the same, uh, in the same current setup which we have in Mumbai or maybe in the Jammu and Kashmir or you are planning to have a separate setup uh, close proximity to the clients which you are approaching to? Uh, yes. So initially as I told, uh, we are targeting for next year somewhere around 5% of market share, where we have enough capacity in the same area where we are located. So some parts are going to be produced where we are developing prototype and some parts are then finalizing and finishing would be done at our Mumbai plant and some for North Indian segment, North India automotive, it would be done in our Kachua plant. So that would be for 
only for the next year. Once we have, and simultaneously we have uh, enough uh, area and land available in our Katua where we are targeting our next expansion for EV. So that would be our major hub for EV producing there for coming two years where we will be expecting around 20% more or 25% more market share uh, compared to what we will have next year. That is about 5%. So yes, uh, initially it would be uh, uh, at some places where we will be uh, making a prototype or then 30-40% uh, and some places we will be finishing. But uh, eventually in a couple of years, entire production line would be set up in Katsua. Yeah. Okay. So do we have any uh, tax benefit having a setup over there? Yes, Katwa do have uh, 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 tax benefit. Uh, there is a GST benefit, then there is a CapEx benefit, uh, subsidies there, then there is a uh, the energy cost is less. So these are the benefits, strategic benefits. There. And they have got a major GST benefit as well. Okay, sir, and for this plan, EV project, which you're planning to have it in the next year, what kind of a capex you're looking into? So, as I told, we have already done major capex, and you need numbers? Uh, yeah, what is the quantum you are paying till date, and what is your projected to do? So, so now, we have already done the capex, uh, like the tie-ups where we will be producing prototypes. So the capex would be somewhere around two and a half to three crores for Indian rupees for testing equipment, which we have already identified. Once the and we are simultaneously trying to procure the same along with our prototype when it is being developed. And once uh, the prototype is out and our testing order is going to be completed in a couple of uh, months, uh, that would be our first capex for this accounting year. Uh, this financial year. And next financial year where we will be uh, producing or ordering mainly it would be somewhere around 10 crore rupees uh, where we will be having an assembly line in Katwa. Those are the numbers in Indian rupees. So somewhere around you say uh, two and a half crores in this financial year and uh, 10 crores in next financial year. Okay. And how it will be funded? So we, we have a couple of institutions who have who are, uh, given us primary note for investing and giving us this, uh, of course, by debt only. So they are going to give us this. Uh, we will not be approaching any other institution or any other centers uh, mm -hmm. currently. Okay. So coming back to our existing business, I want to understand that you we have uh, clients like a Bajaj, we have TVS, we have Hero Motor Corp and Honda and all. So how much of their requirement is met by us currently? Uh, can you come again? I understood what you said is all these OEMs and their requirement and what you asked. What are their requirements? Like suppose uh, they are manufacturing the 100,000 uh, lamps. They require the 100,000 lamps. So how much of their requirement is met by us? Like 40%, 50%. So what is our contribution in their requirement? So currently, as I said, uh, for instrument clusters, that is speedometer, you can consider us to be somewhere around 80% of the total market share of India. Okay. Indicator lamps, signaling lamps, we have somewhere around 50-55% uh, market share compared uh, in India for all the two-wheelers. And four-wheelers we have very marginal because four-wheelers, uh, uh, they would be, they are mainly into LEDs now, not incandescent. So for incandescent, it is mainly two-wheelers now which are using. Okay. In our uh, revenues, uh, how much the OEMs contribute and how much the replacement market contribute? So, replacement market, we are somewhere around 3% of our total turnover and 97% is OEM. So, majorly we are into OEMs only? Yes, yes, OEM. So, would that cause any pressure on the market or how are the market uh, outlook? So, when the volume is there, then like uh, the margins are... Uh, uh, comfortable, we can say, with OEMs. In aftermarket, uh, it is the replacement market. Margins are there, but it is a product specific, where in some products margins are thin, some products the margins are high. So it is average. And it takes time.
time to grow replacement market we have just ventured last year uh, and now we have introduced lot of products and we have made dealers distribution so i think within couple of years we will have uh, a significant presence in each and every shop and you will be able to see you will everywhere uh, specifically when we will start ev as well ev chargers and we will do this uh LEDs for four wheelers as well so then you will be able to see our company presence all across india sir and my last question are we looking to export like uh, increasing our presence like the countries like the middle east or uae or singapore like uh mainly we have targeted south america as a hub uh, as a major uh, customer base Okay. Uh, where we have identified uh, our product demand is going to be so we have, what we have done is we have started uh, appointing somebody in uh, north america and canada where they will be able to agent kind of things where they will be visiting south american countries as you know all indian oems uh, in two wheelers they have one or two plants in some are having in brazil some are in venezuela some are in south africa so so there we have a good presence because they know what you will is and it comes with indian bike uh, like you see iran iran is a very major so two wheeler hub where pulsar is a major selling uh, uh bike so they know you will so these are the export hubs but currently let me tell you uh, we do have uh, uh we are developing honda to be our next vendor so our, we are just blocking our production capacity for honda right now once we have once we have adequate capacity for export we will be targeting those area not currently okay that's really is a great information sir thank you and i'll come back in the queue wish you the best thank of thank you very much coming. thank you very much thank you thank you very much as there are no further questions from the participants i now hand the conference over to mr kaushal shinde for closing comments thank you everyone for joining the conference call of urvi t and wedge lands limited if you have any query you can write to us at info@kiriladvisors.com once more thank you everyone for joining the conference thank you thank you everybody Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.